Hi everyone, my name is Julie McCreary and I'm excited to have you join me for this first video in the series Unit Zero Science Practices. This particular video will focus on the introduction to psychology and the content that I share in the videos is aligned with the course exam description which is called the CED and it is issued from the College Board for Advanced Placement Psychology and a lot of the information that I share will come from our class textbook which is the fourth edition of the Myers Psychology for AP course. Whether you are hoping to explore a particular interest or you just want to pass the AP exam, I hope that the material in the videos will guide you through psychology in a meaningful way. In this video, I will answer the following questions. What is psychology and why must we take a science-based approach? By the end of the video, you should be able to define the following concepts, psychology, confirmation bias, hindsight bias, and overconfidence. First, psychology is a relatively new science. Um, in fact, it was established as a scientific study in the late 1800s by a man named Wilhelm Wundt, who created the first laboratory to start studying the mind and human behavior. Prior to this, it kind of stemmed out of two pre-existing fields, philosophy and biology. But his laboratory was not created until 1879. So it's a relatively new field. And what is it exactly? This is what you need to know. Psychology is defined as the scientific study of behavior and mental processes. And psychologists seek to answer all kinds of questions about the mind and behavior, things like what influences our personality, how do mental health disorders develop and how do we treat them, how do social interactions impact our behavior, what's intelligence, how does stress affect the mind and how does that affect our behavior, what are dreams and where do they come from, how do we recall memories and why do we forget them and so much more and we'll learn about this throughout the course. So really briefly, the course as a whole is fit into five different pillars and you can see those pillars here. These pillars represent our five different units, but what you'll notice is this video is unit zero and unit zero focuses on the foundation at the bottom. You can see the foundation at the bottom says scientific inquiry and research methods. And what's really important for us before we jump into unit one is for us to really understand the scientific process, how researchers collect data, how to interpret that data, and then we're going to draw on those skills throughout the entire school year. So by now you've probably realized that psychology, though it involves the mind and behavior, it's actually a science. And the conclusions that psychologists make are rooted in research design and the experimentation process. And I often have students who are surprised at the amount of math and science that they encounter in this class because a lot of schools and universities categorize psychology as a humanity or a social studies. But what you will learn, especially in the next few minutes, is that we really need to take a science-based approach because we cannot rely on common sense or intuition to drive our conclusions or to dictate what we believe about human behavior. And what's really important for us in taking this scientific attitude is just knowing that we need to have curiosity, we need to be a little skeptical, we need to have humility, and just being aware that we are vulnerable to error and so that we can be open to new ideas and new perspectives. And these factors help prepare us to think critically about our own assumptions. They help us determine um, and discern our own biases. They help us evaluate evidence and assess conclusions. And so before I go on to the next slide, I just want to reiterate the three key points I've made so far. So one, psychology's findings are a result of a scientific approach. They're based in careful observation and testing. The next thing is that a scientific attitude equips us to be curious and skeptical and humble. It allows us to scrutinize our own ideas and assumptions. And number three, critical thinking can help put our ideas to the test. So over the next four slides, I'll go over four reasons why we cannot rely on our own intuition. We have to rely on research. And the first reason is the hindsight bias. The hindsight bias is often thought of as the I knew it all along principle because we have the tendency to believe after learning about an outcome that we could have known it all along. So think about after a Super Bowl. After a Super Bowl, everyone knows that team was going to win. Of course that pass was going to end that way. Or of course this play ruined the game or won the game. And that's a great example of the hindsight bias. This happens a lot. We tend to not be very good at predicting the future, but once we get to the future, of course we would have known it all along. And one example that the Myers textbook uses is when you give two groups of people a, a conclusion from a psychological research study, but the conclusions are different, 
they end differently, both groups look at that conclusion and go, of course, I would have known that. So here's the example. You tell the first group that psychologists have found that separation weakens romantic attraction because as the saying goes, out of sight, out of mind. And then you ask those participants in that group to imagine why this might be true. And most people can, and nearly all will view this finding as true um, and unsurprising because of course, I would have known that. And it is, that actually is a true conclusion about separation and relationships. However, when you go to the next group, the second group who give, who are given the opposite finding, psychologists have found that separation actually strengthens romantic relationships. Because as the saying goes, absence makes the heart grow fonder. The people in this group will have a very similar response when you ask them to imagine, like, what do you think about that result? Many of them will say, of course I knew that. That was common sense. That makes perfect sense because of the hindsight bias. Typically what happens is when we get a result, whatever the result is after the fact, of course I could have predicted that result. But typically we do not have that great of ability to make those predictions. And so this is called the hindsight bias, the tendency to believe I could have known it all along. A similar cognitive pitfall we make is the problem of overconfidence. And as humans, we tend to think that we know more than we actually do. In fact, we are often more confident than we are correct. And a great example of this has come from the 1978 study using anagrams. This was done by Richard Gorenson, and you can see the anagrams he used in the top corner of your screen. He asked participants how long they thought that it would take them to unscramble the letters in the left-hand column to find the words water, entry, and barge. You try it. Think about how long it might take you. Go ahead and commit to your answer. Write it down. Write down how long you think it would take you to unscramble the words in the left-hand column and get the words in the right-hand column. And what Richard Gorenson found out is that most people thought on average, it might take them about 10 seconds. This was not too hard. It was pretty easy. But when he tested people, he found in actuality, it took most people an average of about three minutes to complete. So I'll give you another one. We'll just test this out on you. I'm going to give you one anagram where the letters are scrambled. And I would like for you to predict how long you think it would take you to unscramble one anagram. So it's got five letters, just like the previous. I want you to make a prediction and then get out a timer and see how long it really takes you. So here is your anagram. O, C, H, S, A. Now make a quick prediction, make it quick, and then start your timer. All right, how'd it go? If you solved the puzzle, then you figured out that the anagram of O-C-H-S-A can be scrambled and unscrambled into the word C-H-A-O-S, chaos. Were you overconfident in your prediction? Well, this happens a lot. Let me give you another example of a psychologist who studied overconfidence. Philip Tetlock found that after surveying 27,000 uh, people who he believed were experts in the field of world events. He asked them to predict future world events and then tell him how correct they thought they would be. And on average, these experts in world events thought they would be about 80% correct in their predictions. But what Tetlock found was that they were actually 40% correct. And so these findings teach us that we tend to be overconfident in, in how we feel we can uh, predict future events, how we think we can predict, we can perform. And so we really, really need to rely on research and not our own beliefs and our own assumptions. Another example of why we cannot rely on our own intuition is the tendency to perceive order in random events. And so we really need to rely on research because sometimes we think things are correlated or we think there are patterns when there really are not. So suppose I flip a coin six times, which of the following sequences of heads and tails do you think would most likely occur? Take a second and look at those three sequences. I want you to make a prediction which sequence you think would most likely occur. Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky in 1972 found that most people thought that sequence two would be most likely to occur. Heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, heads. But in actuality, all three are equally likely, or you might say equally unlikely. Now look at figure 4.1. Which cards hand do you think are you are most likely to be dealt? In actuality, your chances of being dealt either hand are the same. 1 in 2,598,960. We just have the tendency to perceive patterns 
in randomness. And we need to be careful if we rely on our own assumptions that this is a human tendency. Finally, another human tendency that people can fall into that can lead them away from reality or truth is the confirmation bias. And psychologists have found that we might actually seek out information that affirms our own assumptions and beliefs rather than evaluating all of the available evidence. Peter Wazin found that once people formed a belief, they quickly accepted the evidence that supported that belief and supported their initial hypothesis rather than searching for evidence that might counter it. His study presented people with a pattern, two, four, six, and asked them to find the rule. And to determine the rule, they could present the researcher with additional patterns and ask, does this fit the rule? When they believed they found the rule, they could announce that they had solved the problem. And many people assumed that the rule was adding by two. So they asked questions like, does 8, 10, 12 fit the rule? Does 20, 22, 24 fit the rule? And after receiving the answer, yes, then they automatically assumed their hypothesis was correct rather than trying out um, other possible patterns that could disprove their hypothesis. And what Wazen found was that most participants were very confident that they found the rule because they had evidence that supported their initial hypothesis and they didn't seek out any other um, evidence that would disprove it. So what was Wazen's rule? any set of numbers that ascended. So one, two, three would fit the rule. 57, 58, 59 would fit the rule. And this, the confirmation bias, can affect our real lives. And when we are aware of it, we can think more critically rather than just simply uh, accepting evidence that fits our assumptions and fits our beliefs. So before I move on, I want to remind you of the key points to remember. Confirmation bias, hindsight bias, overconfidence and our tendency to perceive patterns and random events can lead us to overestimate our own intuition. And we really need to rely on scientific inquiry that to help us make decisions about what is real and what is true about the mind and behavior, because some things just might be random or they might be an illusion or they might not be true. And so in psychology, we rely on data, experimentation and careful research to make our conclusions about the mind and behavior. So as I close out this video, I have four review questions from the content and that I covered just a few minutes ago, and I will read the questions. I won't read the answers. So you'll need to pause the video and determine which answer you think is correct. I will share the correct answers on the last slide. So the first question is, why is psychology considered a science? The second question is, the tendency to exaggerate the correctness or accuracy of our beliefs and predictions is called. Question number three, while sitting at a stoplight, Nancy believes the next car she sees will be blue because the previous three cars have been blue. Which psychological concepts explains her belief? Number four, after the student council election, a friend tells you he could have guessed who would have been elected president. Which psychological phenomenon might this scenario best illustrate? Okay, so this wraps up Part one, Introduction to Psychology of the Unit Zero Science Practices series. If you would like to check your answers on the multiple choice questions there below, you should be able to now explain what is psychology and why we must take a science-based approach. You should also be able to define hindsight bias, confirmation bias, and overconfidence.